The US power grid is adding an incredible amount of batteries and I think we're kind of missing just how many being added. California is a really good example for what's happening. In California, millions and millions of dollars of solar energy were being completely wasted or curtailed as they call it during the day. And all of a sudden, all the enormous batteries that were installed in California enabled the state to be able to move away from fossil fuels so that between the peak time, 6 to 10 p.m. in the evenings, batteries now supply the primary amount of, they're the number one supplier of energy during that peak time. But actually, it's not just California that's installing mega batteries. The rest of the US is doing it as well. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to have you with us. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. I'll be the Sydney EV show on the 8th, 9th, and 10th of November. Would love to see you there. And I've got free tickets for everyone. I'll put a link in the description below. There's three different promo codes. You can use them depending on the day you're coming. The US power grid has added the battery equivalent of 20 nuclear reactors in the past four years. Now that sounds really good, right? The battery equivalent of 20 nuclear reactors. Obviously, um, there's certain interests, you know, certain um, fossil fuel interests who don't want you to know this, of course. I mean, for example, companies building these nuclear power plants, people who just have a vested emotional interest in the concept of fossil fuels or nuclear power. I understand it. I used to be one of them. I used to think that nuclear power was brilliant. It was the solution. Now I've realized that actually economically, it doesn't make sense. But anyhow, what is incredible about all of this is that 20 nuclear reactors, the equivalent to 20 nuclear reactors of batteries, right? But, 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 if we have a look at what's happening, you start to realize that that is actually not that impressive. Now, it is impressive, don't get me wrong, but the trajectory and the speed of battery deployments is so much faster now than what it was a few years ago. The US is likely to install as many batteries in 2024 and 2025 as what was installed combined over the past 50 years. So within a two year period, more batteries will be deployed and built in the US than what were deployed and built over the, part, the previous 50 years. So really that 20 nuclear reactors, it's an impressive number, between, but between 2024 and 2030, probably the equivalent to around 50 nuclear reactors will be built in the US. Anyhow, faced with worsening climate-driven disasters and an electricity grid increasingly supplied by intermittent renewables, the US is rapidly installing huge batteries that are making a huge impact on the grid. They're actually helping prevent power blackouts. From barely anything, only a few years ago, the US is now adding utility scale batteries at a incredible, at a truly staggering pace, having installed more than 20 gigawatts of battery capacity to the electric grid, with five gigawatts of this occurring just in the first seven months of this year. This means the battery storage equivalent of the output of 20 nuclear reactors has been bolted onto America's electricity grid in barely four years with the EIA predicting this capacity will double again to 40 gigawatts by 2025. 40 gigawatts by 2025. So basically the amount of energy will double within a space of just over a year. The amount of batteries will double, I should say. Starting in 2020, US utility scale battery capacity has seen a steep rise. And have a look at Tesla's financials. Have a look at what, what Tesla are doing, where they're making their money from. Their growth is coming all from battery deployment and a lot of profit as well. California and Texas, which both saw all time highs in battery discharged grid power this month, are leading the way in this growth, says The Guardian, with bulking batteries helping manage the amount of clean yet intermittent solar and wind energy that these states have added in recent years. What I love about this is just the fact that it feels kind of insane that so many countries and so many states and so many cities are curtailing and wasting just literally billions and billions of dollars of free energy. It's, it's like burning money. It's like burning 
billions of dollars. Just imagine a, a burning pile of money. And this money, this big burning pile of money, it's still burning right now. It's literally burning right this second. As you watch this video, it's burning and it's on fire. But in some places, it's not. Or at least the pile is growing smaller and smaller. So all these batteries that are coming online, they're reducing the size of this enormous burning pile of money. In addition to all that, the explosion in battery deployment has helped keep the lights on in California this summer, when in previous years the state has seen electricity rationing or blackouts during intense heat waves that see air conditioning use soar and power lines topple because of wildfires. We can leverage that stored energy and dispatch it when we need it, said Patty Pop, chief executive of PG&E, California's largest utility. It's been an extraordinary growth, said John Maurer, Director of Reliability Assessment and Performance Analyst Analysis at the North American Electric Reliability Corporation. It's still technology that we are getting used to working with because the system wasn't designed for it. But from a reliability perspective, it presents a golden opportunity. This changes the whole paradigm of producing electricity, delivering it and consuming it. Storage gives us a bit of a time machine to deliver it whenever we need it. Isn't that amazing, right? To deliver the power whenever we actually need it. Like if you're not home, do you want to use the power? Uh, no, you don't, of course. So it makes so much sense that now we have batteries that are capable of discharging all this wasted energy. But when we need it, unlike a coal power station or a gas power station, they can make power when it's on and they have to be on all the time basically to be economically viable. While scientists are clear that the US and the rest of the world must radically slash planet heating emissions from electricity generation and other sources like cars, the rapid growth of clean energy, such as solar and wind, provides more peaks and troughs of production that need to be actively managed to retain a reliable grid. Batteries can smooth out some of that variability from those times when the wind isn't blowing or the sun isn't shining. The Germans have a word for this sort of thought. They call it Dunkelflot said Mura. So if you have a four hour battery that can get you through a dunkle flood, then well, then you, then you sort it essentially. Of course, wind and sun droughts can last longer than the longest duration batteries available. Meaning, well, there may be very rare occasions where, um, you know, a four hour battery isn't long enough. And most batteries are four hours. But now you'll find actually a lot of the new batteries being deployed are actually eight hours long. And the truth is that there's this myth that solar panels don't work when it's raining or when it's overcast. And actually they do. I mean, I've got firsthand experience. Old solar systems, new solar systems, they certainly don't produce as much power when it's not sunny, but they produce an incredible amount of power. For example, my solar system here today, it was cloudy today. And my system on a good day will produce over 150 kilowatt hours of energy. But today it produced about 105, right? And it was predominantly cloudy today. So solar panel efficiency has drastically improved. This whole myth, this idea that oh, if the sun doesn't shine for a week, then we're all screwed because the batteries won't be recharged. It's actually not true. Of course, a fully clean grid will also require a vast upgrade in US transmission lines. And that's actually happening in many states, such as Texas. Now the shift to renewable energy swiftly across the country is happening in the US. The permitting reform to allow grid upgrades that are necessary is a bitterly contested issue with many environmental groups opposed to looser regulations they say will only empower fossil fuel concerns. But batteries are playing an increasingly strong supporting role in the energy transition, with the International Energy Agency last week calling them a key source of dispatchable capacity globally. The IEA forecasts that batteries will provide about 40% of all short-term electricity flexibility needs worldwide by 2050. 40% of all short-term electricity needs, in other words, of the primary amount of energy we need, 40% of it will come from batteries. There are a lot of changes happening, but monstrous action is still needed if we're going to make this energy transition, said Mara. Now, the truth is that um, I think we're missing what's going on here. A lot of these people working in the field, I totally understand their feelings. And, you know, they say, well, this is great. This is great, but so much more needs to be done. But I think they often miss 
what's actually happening, and that is exponential growth. There is unquestionably exponential growth going on with energy deployment worldwide. The number of batteries being built, the number of batteries being deployed worldwide is skyrocketing every single year. And I often try to give people the analogy, right? The analogy of the rice on the chessboard. And I have done this for a long time since I started the channel, I was talking about this because we often, we miss, we, 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 too, we often focus on today or actually most commonly humans focus on what happened last week. And that's how we did, that's how we figure, oh, the next six years, this will happen because this happened, this is what happened last week. But we, as humans being, beings, we, we cannot understand the idea of exponentiality. We just don't. The, the human brain is c- incapable of fully understanding it. So the reason I, I think this is the case is when you ask someone who hasn't heard this before, now, if you've heard this before, then obviously you can't, you can't qualify yourself and say, oh, yeah, no, no, no I understand exponential growth because humans just don't. The chessboard analogy is this. One grain of rice added to the first square on a chessboard, right? It's one. On the second chess, on the second square, you double that number. There's now two. The third one, you double it again. There's now four, then eight, then 16. Now, of course, a chessboard has a total of 64 squares. So by square 10, you would have 512 grains of rice. Now you've got 54 squares left and only 512 grains of rice. It's not really that much, right? Well, next, by square 20, you will have 524,000 grains of rice. Now you have 44 squares left. By square 24, things are getting a little bit crazy. There's more than 8 million grains of rice, and that's just square 24. Square 32, and you have 2.1 billion. Then something insane happenings. Um, you know, on square 36, the number is 34.4 billion. By square 64, there's a number that I actually don't know how to pronounce. It's 9223-372-036-854-775-808. Now I'm told that if all of that rice was piled up, it would reach the top of Mount Everest. Now, this analogy obviously is used to try and explain just how quickly growth comes, exponential growth. When we hit that exponential part of the curve, the growth curve, that S curve, things happen incredibly fast. And that's where we're at right now. Thanks for watching.